Hi, I'm Kevin. And I'm Amanda. And we are serving up all that jam. All that jam, quick hit. Brian Thomas Horn for hire. Yeah, and so we've had um, Alan on the show, um, as well as I feel like a, a whole bunch of folks who you know have recorded with him. I mean, he's been doing this for so long also. Um, and I love that because it's kind of that like circular nature of things. Um, and I know you've done a lot of other work with Finnage League Records in some capacity or another over the years, um, but I don't know too much about like which projects they were. And I was kind of curious if there's any of kind of that um, collaboration you did with him that stands out over time that maybe you could share a little bit uh, with us. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, we, we've kind of uh, developed into being the Vintage League Music Horn section uh, for every, everything really that, that comes out of there. And so, you know, just this week we were working on Joe Marcinek's new record, um, uh, writing and recording a lot of stuff for that, which was awesome. But I think uh, for me, the one that I hold true to, to my heart is the uh, Crushed Velvet record, which was all Al's originals, uh, you know, under his uh, his uh, little little stage name there, Crushed Velvet and the Velveteers. And um, I, I think that record is really important to me because, man, it came at a time when all of us were doing nothing. The gig stopped and, you know, we, we had nothing going on. So um, he had all this material and, you know, he just kept on cranking out tunes and it's like, I need horns for this. I need horns for that. And uh, it was uh, really therapeutic and, and a really amazing outlet during the pandemic to have a project so amazing to work on and uh, to keep the creative juices flowing, even though we weren't playing gigs. And, you know, uh, um, so I really I really am proud of that particular record. A lot of great singers on it. And and obviously Al's writing is is, is incredible. And uh, so I think I, out of all the Vintage League music stuff, you know, I really love that. But also, you know, uh, I've released, um, you know, my own stuff on Vintage League music with my big band. So, um, you know, it's a ni- nice relationship with that record label for sure. You know, kind of taking it maybe a, a little bit differently, though, you know, for you um, and your role, how do you see that different from maybe, you know, rhythm section, guitarist, you know, for what you bring to the equation, um, what is it that you enjoy about what you do specifically, you know, within the function um, of any kind of, of, uh, you know, band or organization like that? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of times I'm the, I'm like the extra guy, you know, especially being the trombonist. Like if they have a, enough money, they get a sax player. And then if they have a little bit more money, oh, let's get a trumpet player. And if they have a little bit more, let's get a percussionist. And then, and then finally it's like, oh, let's get a trombone. Or So a lot of times I'm like the extra cherry on top of something. So for instance, last night, um, I played a gig with Lettuce um, at, um, at the Schubert Theater in Boston, and that we did a tribute uh, to Aretha Franklin's Live at the Fillmore West album with Judith Hill singing, which was amazing. But, you know, for that material, you really need more than two horns to pull it off uh, the orchestration. So, um, so, you know, I, I jumped on board with them for the night. So it is kind of cool to be able to come in and out of bands and, and sit in and, and collaborate and do weekend runs with bands and, and, um, do recordings and, and, um, uh, and it, it really has allowed me to stay home and with my family, you know, I have, I have, uh, you know, wife and three kids and, and so, being on the road is really not an option. So being a, a hired gun horn player um, is really the, the, the perfect way for me to, to maintain, uh, you know, a regional presence in the scene and, um, and, and pretty much sleep in my bed almost every night. There you go. How, okay. So how do you adapt your playing to fit different musical contexts? A big band one night, a smaller thing the next, backing someone up the third? Yeah, well, I, th- I mean, I think that's kind of one of the natures of a horn player, you know, you're, you to be versatile. And um, I, you know, I, I've always believed in that. Um, you know, I, I was a I was a classical trombonist at Ithaca College where I went to school, and um, uh, you know, just started 
you know, playing, playing a lot of, uh, you know, funk and jazz. And then um, I started touring with John Brown's Body, which is, you know, so I really got exposed to learning reggae and, and, and learning how to play that style. And I was really young at the time. I was like 21 figuring all this out. And I realized that, um, you know, as, as a horn player, you have to be versatile. You have to be um, open to everything. And uh, if you're open to everything, you realize that it's really all not that different. You know, you just kind of tweak it here, tweak it there to fit the style. And, um, uh, you know, it, it could be a lot more. Now, um, I know when I talked to Jared and Kev, this was for a bar line shift. This was, gosh, a while back. Um, you know, we started talking about kind of the regional thing, me being from the Northeast, a lot of bands in the 90s, you know, that I was kind of going up and down the East Coast listening to. We've talked with other people, too, about, I think, what you were mentioning, which is, you know, when bands are looking for some extra sound and they're coming into your area, they know that you've got the chops. Um, is it true that um, as a horn player, you may not get a ton of like practice or time to kind of get into the material beforehand because we've heard this before right kevin from alex um, alex was saying that right. yeah he's time. like you know you kind of got to be ready to do arrangements or kind of on the fly oh, oh, oh <laughs> yeah really quick at like learning things fast you know and um which is okay you know and, and a lot of times you know there might be another horn player on the gig that is a consistent member of the band so like they you can kind of lean on them and guide you to guide you through but it is a skill of being able to you know listen on the spot or even you know um you know just quickly be able to listen to stuff on the way so a couple like a month or two ago uh twiddle was in town and, and they asked me to come sit in and you know they sent me some songs like on, and so i'm listening to on the car ride you know, so I got to listen, got to listen in the car. And then when I got there, the trumpet player kind of helped run through it, like literally for 15 minutes. And then I was like, okay, showtime, let's go. Um, so it is a skill. And, and um, I think the the horn players that can do that, those are the horn players that ended up getting a lot of this kind of work um, because, um, you know, um, you know, you know, we know the vibe. And even if you don't have it perfect, you know, you can listen and react in the moment quick enough um, to, to pull it off. Um, in a perfect world, yeah, it's great when you, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, laughing when I, like when I get like a couple rehearsals in with a band, I'm like, oh, man, this is so awesome. I love this is great. You know, amazing. Because, um, you know, it, when you're when you're when you do what I do, you don't always get that benefit. You know, you get a sound check and that's it and you and you know and then you you just go with it if you are enjoying all that jam please like and subscribe to our social media channels at all that jam pod on twitter instagram and facebook or visit our website all that jam make sure to sign up for our email list and tune in every week for new episodes also look for full interviews on our youtube channel and remember stay beautiful but don't stay underground too long